So as an object, one of the reasons why we create objects in C++ is two things. Number one is data, and then number two is features that we can use on that data to manipulate that data easily for us. Now, strings have already been built for us, so everything's taken care of when it comes to that. Again, you know it looks like an array, but what you probably don't know is all the functions that are associated with this sucker, so I'm going to try to get there. And there it goes. And yes, I'm going to C++.com. There's other sites that are out there. I'm sure your instructor may suggest something else. That's just fine. But anyway, so this goes over basically what the string is. And sorry for all the commercials there, but what else is in there, right? These are all the member types it has, but really, what I really want to get into, yes, it has iterators that are back there. That's how you actually point to certain parts. Point to certain parts of the string. Yeah, pointers, told you. Here are some of the items when it comes to capacity. We'll go over some of these here in a, in, in a bit here. But I wanted to show you all of these different things that are already built into C++ strings. Now, what I really want to show you, look at, look at all the items that are in here that are built for you. Notice that, by the way, in C++, it tells you, well, kind of, if you're used to Java, you're used to Java APIs, it's very similar to this, but, uh, which is changing in Java, by the way, um, we show examples and we show the overall setup of it. And, but also, even better than that, is that it'll show you examples at the end here. That's sort of there it is on how to use it. It goes over all the little nuances that we have inside as parameters. And then it goes into the various you know, types of function setups that we have for this. So just the insert function in C11 has what, seven, eight different versions that we can use because of the setup that we may need for the different parameters. And by the way, we also have C14 in there as well, right? Notice, I don't know if there's any changes in that, but I'll have to study that a little bit more. But it goes even into the different versions that we have as well. So think of all of this stuff that, wow, that string really has, and that's the beautiful part about this is that, well, these are all items that you and I did not have to create. It was already a part of the object called strings. So what I'm going to do here is that in the notes for this particular page, there is a setup on showing you different functions like at, and where's the at one? There it is right there. Uh, editing our element access here. I'm going to go to the at real quick. And this one returns a reference uh -huh, to the character at position POS in the string. And again, it'll show you towards the bottom an example how to exactly use that. So that's the nice part about that. It goes even into complexity if we really wanted to get into that far. So these are really nice features that are already built in but you will need to go through this sometime and study it for the application that you are building. Again, all I'm going to do is kind of show you where things are, go over some of the basic functions here in a minute, which I'm not done yet, and I'm not going to cover everything because look at all the functionality that we have in strings. So, so bear with me. Let me hit a few of the big ones here and we'll move on. Here's a couple of ones I wanted to hit right off the bat. There's at, fine, and you can see some of the other ones here. Add is going to do just that. And again, notice you can tell that professor must be an object because we have that dot notation letting us know what function that we need to use. And then given a parameter of index four here, return the L from there. Now again, the nice part is, is your IDE is going to help you with that. So if you were to type this up for some reason, you typed in professor and then type, typed in that at, you're going to get a massive list of all of the features that you have access to, which is going to really more reflect what we just saw on that web page. So it can be, frankly, overwhelming. So that's why I'm going over some of the basics here. Of at, we can use find to return the first index of OLI, which is going to be three. We have another find where it gives us uh, what letter or what characters that we're looking for and start from a particular index. So we have a lot of great things. Substring is pulling from... Well, I think you can figure that out. It's going to be pulling a substring from a string, starting at index 1 and ending at 4. We have insert if we wanted to, start at index 2, and then you add your word that you want to put in there. Notice these are 
all were manipula string manipulations that, frankly, we're used to. Replace, I'm a big uh, Wordle guy. Oh, that'd be a great application. But anyway, these are all of the things that I would use, maybe not erase, but these are all the things that I would use to create that application in C++. So here's some of the features. Notice the overall structure is what string are we particularly working with, the dot notation, the name of the function that we want, and then a couple parameters that we want from there in order to do our job. Welcome to C++ functions, which are already built for us. Thank goodness.